And um, we're going to be talking about memoirs. We're going to be talking about writing. We're going to be talking about getting your story out because that to me is probably one of the most important things we got is our story. And that's where we connect. That is where we realize how much alike we really are. That's where we find sympathy, empathy, compassion, love. It's huge. And I want to see as many people out there in the world share their stories. And um, before I introduce my very special guest, I'm going to read a quote. I have no clue. Listen, honestly, have no clue. Oh, before I do that, I want to say hello to Amnon because you might hear him. He's our producer. Hello. Hello. You doing all right? I'm doing just fine. Go on. All right, I'm going to do it. Okay, so this came in a um, chain letter, which I don't normally read, but it was it grabbed my attention, and I have no clue who wrote it. I just know it was just perfect for tonight, so I want to read it. It's not what you gather, but what you scatter that tells what kind of life you have lived, and it really, uh, it really got me because I really feel like the books that you write, the words that you share... That is what you're scattering, and that is so, so very important. So with that, I'm going to introduce my guest. I'm so excited. Alice Osborne. Hello. Hello, Marilyn. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here. Well, you know, it's it's really delightful for me to have you here. I've known Alice for, I don't know, a while. Five years. Five years. And from the moment I met Alice... I just had this, I don't know, enormous connection and and love for her. And I just, um, I'm so glad you're here with me. Thank you. So Alice has her master's. She's um, the author of three books of poetry, After the Streaming Stops, um, Unfinished Projects, and Right Lane Ends, and is the editor of the anthology Tattoos, She is working on her next poetry book, Heroes Without Capes. Her past educational and work experience is unusually varied. Uh, Love that because that's how it really is, isn't it? I mean, isn't it? It That's how it really should be. I mean, I look at myself and I say, I'm a collection. (laughs) Um, I'm a scrapbook. (laughs) I'm a scrapbook. I'm a quilt. And yeah, and now it feeds her strengths as an editor who takes good writers and turns them into great authors. Also, um, Alice also teaches fiction, memoir, and poetry all over the country. After her program, students know how to write well using sensory images to create one-of-a-kind main characters the reader won't forget. Her pieces have appeared in the News and Observer, the Broad River Review, the Pedestal Magazine, Soundings Review, and in numerous journals and anthologies. Alice lives in Raleigh! Yes, with her husband and two adorable children. I added that. And her website is aliceosborne.com. And so it is my pleasure to uh, welcome Alice. And I want to just remind everybody out there to please refresh your, if you don't see me in Peach, then you're watching last week's show. So re- make sure you refresh your um, uh, browser so that you'll see the current show. And this is a interactive opportunity. So you are more than welcome to comment on the on on our chat, call in as somebody is doing right now, and um, have at it because we want to make a difference in the world and we need to you know engage with you. So, hello, hello, hey, how are you? Good, and you? I'm doing all right. Now, who do we have on the line now? Uh, my name is Ogan, and I am not only a friend of Alice, but I am an author and um, just published my first book last September, and I think I owe much gratitude to Alice for it. So just want to call in and uh, sh- uh, give a show of support for her. Good, good, good. Thank you, Ogan. Thank you. It's great so, to have you here. So you are most welcome. Tell us, what kind of book have you written? Well, my book is, I like to think of it as a mashup of, of memoir, spirituality, humor. Um, we, we're still struggling to find a category for it, but it is, it is pretty much in a memoir style. Um, I'm an ordained unity minister, and uh, this book started out as, I guess, a collection of blog posts. 
and I uh, thought to put it into a book, and I reached out to Alice Rell. She's actually the editor of the book um, as well, um, but I've known Alice. How long have we known each other now? It's Four been, years. Yeah, a few years, and I first got to know her as being a part of her book club. Um, she does a book club in Raleigh called, Lord, I've forgotten what it's called. The Wonderland Book Club. They, hello, of course, <laughs> Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> I'm in D.C. now, so I've moved away. I've, I've, I've been gone a year, so um, I've, I've, I've not been part of the book club for a year. But um, she, I, I love the book club that she hosted because um, they read good stuff. You know, it wasn't, you know, forgive any listeners out there who are into John Grisham and, uh, you know, stuff like that. But, but these, were, these were really great authors that, that we read and... Um, people like Lionel Shriver, and we read we read awesome books. And um, Alice is, has really she worked with me really well on the editing of the book. Um, and can I plug my book or? or yeah, absolutely. Then I would love to ask you some like per, is it uh, all right with you if I ask you some personal questions? Not too personal. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be nice. Yeah, what's it's, your, it's, it's quite it's quite all right. What's I, your book? You, what's your book called? Uh, the book is called, uh, the full title is Rants to Revelations, Unabashed, Unabashedly Honest Reflections on Life, Spirituality, and the Meaning of God. And where could um, our listeners find your book? Um, online everywhere. Uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Uh, you can visit the book website, Rants to Revs. That's R-A-N-T-S. T O R E V S rants to revs dot com is the book website, but Amazon it's on there, and you can get it you know, either as a digital download if you read it on your Kindle, you can buy the paperback. Um, so yeah, good. That's the book. So 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 let me ask you something because I'm I'm really happy you called in because I'm sure we have a lot of people that are listening and we're going to get into some more of this, but we have people in all kind of on the spectrum. Some people who don't know where to begin. Some people have begun but don't know what to do with it at that point. Some people are in the middle and stuck. Some people have gone through it, have written it, and now what? You know, some people can't even conceptualize the fact that they even have a story to tell. So how was it for you getting started? Well, it, like I said, because because the book really was me um, compiling and expanding on, on blog posts, I'd say the writing started with blogging. I was I was blogging since um, I don't know late '90s, and um, I think that's really where I cut my teeth in the idea of of, of finding a voice and writing. Um, the idea of putting it together as a book, then it was it was interesting because as I was blogging, I never felt the pressure to write. I never felt the pressure to meet a deadline. It was just me sharing. And then when I decided to publish a book and I, and I decided rather than self-publishing to go the traditional route of having a publisher, then all of a sudden it, it changed because now I've got deadlines to meet and mm. I've, got, I've got an editor to report to. Thank you, Alice. And then I've got an editorial, uh, uh, an editorial board at this publishing house that I had to report to. And um, so it was an interesting process of of being able to hear feedback and make changes from individuals who were more seasoned in the publishing world than I was, but at the same time know when I needed to, um, if you will, defend my right in and say, no, this isn't changing, this needs to stay in. So it was it was an interesting uh, dance, um, mm-hmm. if you will. Mm-hmm. Sure. Well, Al, what do you do? You have something to comment about that, Alice? Well, Ogan, he practiced a lot with writing under not pressure, so he knew where the points of his story were, and he knew where his timeline and where he needed to face the dragon, meaning he needed to where to go when the topic was difficult because he had been blogging for such a long time. So he was comfortable with the topics, and he's also a professional speaker since he is a reverend, and he was at the time he was going to ministry school. So he, he was in that mode of speaking his story. And when you're in that mode, it's a lot easier because you have that energy going. And you have that instant feedback, too, well, of what story works and what doesn't. Well, what is the difference between an autobiography and a memoir? A memoir is a slice of life. It can be from 
age seven to age nine. It could be your teenage years. It could be, it could stop from 25, or it could be maybe during the years that you were a wartime nurse in Vietnam. And an autobiography is usually by someone famous, and it's the whole life. So is it, so is it... A memoir is usually easier? someone who's not a famous okay. person. It's someone who's like us. Like us. Yes. So it fits right in with, with all of us and breaking free and share. Uh -huh. Yes. Great. So when I, when I become famous, then can I call it an autobiography or should I still call it a memoir? Hmm. Mm. I think <laughs> memoir is sexier. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> autobiography <laughs> sounds like the autobiography of Ben Franklin or something. And, and the interesting thing about... Uh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, uh, the the thing about the book, it wasn't just me, um, I guess, telling my story. The whole point of the book, or the ulterior motive of the book, if you will, was to communicate um, some spiritual principles um, that that I subscribe to okay. um, as a minister. So it, it was really communicating these principles as I discovered them and practiced them and learned from them throughout um, the years, <clears throat> the few scant Perfect. years of my life. I'm not that old. Perfect. Well, I really appreciate your um, calling in and sharing that because it was a be wonderful beginning to our show. So You're most welcome. I, I thank you so much and continue to listen. And if you have an urge and you have something else to add, please feel free to call us back. And and you're welcome anytime. It's really it's great to have you, and I look forward to uh, looking at your book. It's a great book. Thank you so Thank very you. much. You guys have Thank a good you. evening. Thank you. Thank you. You too. too. Thanks. Uh, just once again, our phone number here is nine one nine five one eight nine seven seven three. Feel free to call in, and if you've written a book or you have any questions for Alice, please we're here to um, help. Okay, so he gave us a little bit of a good beginning. So what's the process in writing a memoir and is the, is is there an audience is there a big enough audience for all these memoirs i mean do people want to read people's memoirs there is and the way i teach it is looking at your life as a hero's journey and also looking at your life or your memoir in the space of five categories ogan's book hits the category of inspiration okay there's also category of leadership change wealth creation, stress management, health, fitness, and motivation. Could you repeat those again? Sure. Because that's a lot of categories. There's These five are... categories. Okay, go ahead. We have leadership change, motivation, inspiration, number three, which is Ogan's book, Inspiration, wealth creation, wealth management, and that could include all the debt reduction books. Like if someone had, was $30,000 in debt and they wrote their story, that would fall into that category. And the last category is health, wellness, fitness, diet, stress management. Okay. And your book should fit into one of those categories. So is this, are these categories you've, you've identified or is this what is in the industry? This is in the, in the, in okay. the industry. In the industry. Yes, this is known okay. in the industry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what is the first step of doing this? Well, the first step is knowing that you have a story and believing in yourself. Okay. And you will have to chart your story as a hero's journey. So the first step is the exposition of your story of who you are. Second is the call to action. What made you the hero that will propel you on this journey? So, okay, so here, how do you identify hero? I'll keep going. Okay. All right. <laughs> And then you, go, you have mentors, you have friends, you have enemies. And as you go through the journey, you will be stopped. You will be, you'll go through a death, then you'll go through a rebirth, and then you'll hit your climax, and then you'll have your falling action. So it's a plot device that fiction writers know very well, but it should be applied to memoir because memoir is creative nonfiction, meaning you're using the techniques of fiction to apply it to memoir so that your readers will keep reading the page. And the five elements of memoir are including setting, voice, point of view, research, and revision. And those also need to be added to the hero's journey. For instance, all writers have a journey. You start off with a, a call, to, call to action incident that makes you want to become a writer. You have friends, enemies. Usually your enemies are the people you live with in your house because they don't want you to become a writer <laughs> because they know that you'll be shut in your room. So they are your enemies. 
and hopefully they'll become your friends eventually when they understand that you're now an artist. And your old friends will become your enemies too because they will move away from you the more that you've, you become your creative self, so you're on your own journey. And then you'll go through a death, which means that everyone, your work will stink, and then you'll go through a rebirth before you hit the climax, which is you get published. And then you have falling action because then you have to do it all over again. Doing it all again to write another piece? To write another piece. Okay, so once you've written one, you're addicted. Yes. There's no... So you see that you're, you have a hero. There's a meta... There's, you're, as a writer, you have to go through your own journey. But as the writer of your memoir, you're a character in that journey. So it's a two-layered thing. So, so, descri- so how does a memoir sound? Like if you could just... I mean, I know that you're, you're, you're a writer, so of course... How, like, if you were just right now, give me an example of what it would sound, a memoir would sound. Sure. Okay. So this is Dr. Richard Seltzer, and this is a piece from, a passage from his essay, The Knife. Essays are also memoir pieces. They're short memoir pieces, usually more with a point. And he's a surgeon. That's all you need to know. There is a hush in the room. Speech stops. The hands of the others, assistants and nurses, are still. Only the voice of the patient's respiration remains. It is the rhythm of a quiet sea, the sound of waiting. Then you speak, slowly, the terse entries of a Himalayan climber reporting back. The stomach is okay, greater curvature clean, no sign of ulcer, pylorus, duodenum fine. Now comes the gallbladder, no stones, right kidney, left. All right, liver, Uh uh-oh. So that's a... a Okay, so you don't write in, so you don't do anything in, well, first person? This is a scene set up, and it is, you want to have first person, but if you're speaking in I, 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 I all the time, you will bore your reader. So you have to have variety. And this is a well-written piece of of the reader knowing where, the action's taking place, and it also provides suspense for the reader. So it's descriptive. Yes. So you are, so I would, if I'm reading a memoir, I could close my eyes and I would see a picture. A well-written memoir. A well-written a well-written memoir, written, I which is what I picture. teach. Ah. I'd like to know how you do that. How do you do that? Well, it's... it's a, I'm not asked how you, you do that. You read the memoir and you close your eyes. Oh. <laughs> An audio book. No, I was no, just no, 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 no. Oh. Just do, do I do sometimes. Because this was perfect. I mean, it's... I mean, the, the, the one... Less than one minute that she was doing it, and you're already there. Yeah. The, 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 uh, well, she says... She nice. sings, too, right? I do. Very she nice. sings... I mean, yeah. So that yeah. was... Okay, go ahead. So... Well, I teach my students place becomes a lesson where if you're a Southern writer, place is very important in the South. And my live students are from the South, but I also teach online and web workshops all over the country. And I include the place because everybody, even if you live in New Jersey, you should talk about New Jersey because it's important because that's where you grew up. It's also Sensory images, knowing how to put in sound, which in this piece, the Richard Seltzer piece, it's all sound, derivative from sound, or the absence of sound. The other senses need to have their place to touch, taste, and smell. We use sight all the time, and a good writer knows when to vary the the senses up and create images. Images are word pictures that convey an emotional meaning. They're not just a picture. They have to convey something emotional to hit the reader. And when you hit the reader, you've got the reader, and also you're creating a universal space. You create a universal space by delving into the details of your life while also hitting themes that everyone can relate to. And those themes can be a sense of loss, a loss of innocence, a loss of identity, and then then a winning back. A, a gaining of that identity, family, a house that you grew up in, place, and that's why I emphasize place so much because everyone comes from somewhere, and everyone also has family too, mm-hmm. and those are universal elements. Mm-hmm. And love, love is the big one. Now, love is what sells novels, but a memoir, what sells memoir is how much has the character, which the main character, 
who is you, how much has that character changed and how has that book, how has that book changed you after you have read it? That's what sells memoirs. So uh, is there a size element to a memoir? Memoir shouldn't be too long. Shouldn't memoir too should long. not be as long as a novel because you have to break up the text in white space because your life does not happen in, in a narrative form. You have to manufacture that narrative. So as a poet... 200 pages would be great. So as a poet... Yes. It, it, it would appear... Because I had never really thought about this before as far as memoir. I mean, I threw, you throw around ro- words. Fiction, nonfiction, poetry, memoir, autobiography, bio... I mean, you throw these around without really understanding the context. Um, so as a poet... Would you say that a memoir has it has rhythm more, differently than, say, an autobiography, an autobiography does? Different memoirs do. I mean, if they're written by someone who has more a, of a poet sense, they're going to be more poetic and more image-laden. If they are more how-to memoirs, such as about financial and how I, I was rock bottom and then I brought myself back up, and it may speak more to a matter-of-fact audience and you have less Im- okay. imagery, it goes back to your audience and where you, how you write and what your voice is. Okay. Very interesting. But every, every writer can use a little bit of imagery and use a little more sensory experience and use some leads and metaphors. Really? Yeah. Okay, we have a question on the chat, but listen, call in. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know there are plenty of people out there who have a story that you're holding in the palm of your hands, in the, in the center of your heart. And I want you to call in, and I want you to share what your ideas are, and I want you to get some guidance from Alice as to what she thinks, where you should start, is this the piece, you know, what part of your life you should share. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask her this question that's on the chat, but I'm also going to say 919-518-9773, Please call in. This is a great opportunity. And if you want to call in on Skype, use computers to, which is the number two, K voice. Mm-hmm. Here's the question. What are some of your favorite words? Some of my favorite words that I use over and over again. Mm-hmm. I, like, I like fence. I like gate. I like the word appropriate. Now, why, why fence and why gate? Those are... I was gated and fenced in as a kid. You were fenced in and gated? I was gated. fenced in. We had fences all around the property. So you were, what, is that, what do you mean by you were fenced in? I was fenced in physically and psychologically. Yeah. So is this... And they, they're, I, they're used a lot in my, those are, when you go, when you edit your own book, you circle words that keep cropping up and, and that's, that happens when I edit someone's poetry book, I said, wow, you really like the word frond, F-R-O-N-D. And the client said, I didn't know I said that all the time. I said, you say it all the time. And, and my favorite noun, I like basement is another one. I like gate, fence. Those are big Those, ones. So, yeah. um, and I don't know that part of your life. Um, so how does that attribute or contribute to where you are now? That I'm not fenced in. Okay. That you're not That's an opposite. In. Right. And did writing change that? Yeah, writing was always a part of my life. And I, I was denying it for a while for it to be the main part. It was always a sub part, a subplot, and I needed to make it the main plot. So did you start out, when you started writing, did you always start out writing poetry or did you write a memoir? Or do we want to talk like fourth grade or are we? <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Where, where was your inclination first? It was fantasy. It was sci-fi fantasy to go there first. Uh-huh. And then I went to King Arthur. And then I went to more love poems. And then I went to deep memoir 10 years ago. Oh. Deep memoir. What do you mean by deep memoir? Well, I had, I had my inciting incident when my parents estranged me 10, 11 years ago. And then that set me on the path. So I had an actual death of a relationship, and then I got reborn. So in a way, my hero's journey started, that was the inciting incident, and then I went up the path for my hero's journey, which also mirrored my writer's journey. When you became your hero, when you became yes. a hero. Yeah, I'm still on it. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I mean, honey, I've, I've, I fell in love yesterday with Thomas Jefferson. 
So, I mean. <laughs> I fell know. in love with them when I was nine years old. Well, I wasn't that progressed. <laughs> I was doing, I was shopping. But now I'm really in love with Thomas Jefferson. Okay, so I want to talk about this hero thing. Sure. Because I really think that that's a very um, interesting place for people to find themselves, take themselves, see themselves. Yes, and what it does is if you look at yourself as a hero, you're not looking yourself at yourself as a victim because so many memoirs that I've read and that I've rejected to edit, they put the... They're, they put themselves in the victim role. My mom did this. My dad did this. Circumstances did this to me. And that's not going to grab the reader because the reader may feel, wow, a lot of, it, a lot of stuff happened to you, but how did you progress? How did you move past that? And what did you learn? What did you gain? And perhaps, and a reader also doesn't want you to see yourself making the same mistakes over and over again. If you made the mistakes you say, well, that was another mistake I made, and perhaps make fun of it. But it's hard to read someone's life, and they keep making the mistakes over and over again. Mm-hmm. I know for, as an editor, it's very hard for me to read, and mm-hmm. I pass judgment on that person. It's really hard yeah. for, for most readers, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they want the hero to learn something and keep going. Because they're make, a hero. Otherwise, then, they're not a hero. Otherwise, they're not a hero. Correct. So, so you, can be, you can be flawed, but not too flawed. You can be honest yes. as a hero. Yeah. Um, so how do, you, how do you get there, though? How do you see yourself? I mean, you have to see that you've done something that other people can learn from, that you can share, that you've come out of something even could be just big or small. It can be big or small. And a lot of older writers, older chronologically, they have all these wonderful experiences of the past. And I'm thinking, like, if George Takai ever wanted to write a memoir, what he had about the internment camps when he was five years old, that would be an inciting incident for him when he was a little boy to be in the Japanese internment camp in Arkansas. Or if you were, if you were taken away from your family or your tobacco farm was destroyed and there was a loss of, there was a death. So all memoirs start with a death and then they end with life and rebirth. And death doesn't have to be physical. It can also be a death of an idea, death of a career, death of a relationship. And why it all starts it, with a death. Why death? Because death is life's change agent. Without death, there's no life. Death clears the way for the living. Breaking free. Mm-hmm. That's what breaking free And death, you think death is horrible. I mean, it is, but it also moves things along in a positive way. Well, you have, well, I always say... That in order to experience freedom, you're freeing yourself from something. Yes. So it's a death. So it's a death. Yes. You've got to come through something to fly, to feel free. Correct. So you're saying the same thing. And it also has to be a sacrifice, too, with death. You have to give something up in order to move forward. Right. Yeah. There always has to be something. Yeah. There always has to be something you give up. And and so is that, and, and that's where you start your memoir? Well, wherever, wherever you saw that big that death probably should be where you start mm-hmm. because otherwise you're not writing a memoir. Otherwise you don't have a story. Story is based, con- based in conflict. It's based in confusion. Mm-hmm. It's based in opposition. If you don't have opposition, mm-hmm. you don't have a story, and you're better off making something else with your artistic talents. So, so I can see that. I can see that if you are beginning, or not if, but when we begin... Um, it, to to say where you've come from, yes, first, which is which is the pain, mm-hmm. and and that's how, you, and then to carry a a, re, a, a reader through, right? You have to, but start, you don't want too much pain because right, that right, will right. that will drag your reader down, and you want small moments where you're walking with your son or your daughter, you're looking at a flower and you're listening to a piece of music, and that's the lull before the stir- storm where the action hits, but you don't want it all to be. Boom, 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 like a Richard Donner right. film. I mean, it's, it has to have some slow points, and this is where your writing will shine, and that's why you need to be a good writer and know how to put sentences together and know how to keep the reader with you even in the small moments and trust the reader that they're not going to put your book down. So let's talk a little bit about being a good writer. Sure. Because many of us might have a story, but now what makes us a good writer? Is a good writer somebody who has a good editor? <laughs> I mean, a good writer is someone who listens to their editor and does 
and moves and improves every time the editor meets with them. That's a good writer. That's a good writer. Do you? I do. I do. What do you listen to yourself? I listen to myself or well, my students author, move. Editor. I it that's true. <laughs> yeah. So it so as long as somebody has a has a story. They need some kind and that means good bad death life. Good bad death life in real simple terms. In real simple terms and they have a good editor and they listen to their editor, they will be a good writer. Yes. And they listen. Yes. So that means that, that for most people that can happen. Most people, and they also need to invest in themselves. And what does invest in yourself mean? It means going to the library and checking out books on writing. It means taking the time to read books about your genre, which in this case would be memoir. It would also mean investing the time in a book club. Book clubs are free. But you also have to buy the book if it's not available at, free at the library. And they take time. They're always worth it. I've been in various book clubs for now 11 years, different, about three or four different book clubs. Mm -hmm. And I started Wonderland Book Club five years ago. We're on our fifth year, which is the one Ogan mentioned. You also need to take classes, conferences. And we here live in North Carolina, which is one of the writing estates in the country. The other one is Missouri. And it's interesting, why does North Carolina and Missouri, why do they have so much in common? Yeah. They're both very contentious during the Civil War. They're both, uh, there was slave slavery, there was a Southern value system, a lot of bloody battles, and a lot of great universities in both states. Interesting. Because you have to have great universities in order to support the writers in the state. And Missouri has that. They also have Mark Twain. Very interesting. Yeah. And we cool. have Duke, and we have NC State. We have Charles Frazier, we have Lee Smith. But we're in a constant battle with Missouri. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's the story. That's the story. Uh, okay, so we have another question from Chris, and she wants to know what your favorite published story is. What my favorite published well, story That's easy. That's The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. Oh, the, but she's about the journalist. She's the journalist. Who, 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 met her, who saw her mother digging out of garbage. Yes. And she's a journalist. Love that book. Isn't that great? Yeah. Now, why? Why? Because she lived a very hard life with her weird parents, but the book is ultimately about love and how the siblings, she had three younger siblings that she was living with at the time, and maybe one older one, and they all pulled together. They mm -hmm. all loved each other, and ultimately they loved their parents. So is that a memoir? Yes. So that is a memoir. Yes. It's a, if, if you haven't read it, it really is a great book. I mean, she's a, an NBC or a, C, a CNBC or something yes. um, journalist, and she it begins, it grabs you from the moment. It does. You, I mean, I could really see what she was doing in the moment she started by, I think she started by saying she was driving in a taxi. She was driving in a taxi. And the reason she's such a good writer is because she had practice, 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 practice as a journalist. And she was also a very good writer when she was a teen, and she practiced and she practiced and she practiced. Hemingway became a great writer through all of his journalism, which teaches you in memoir to share the good and the bad and the ugly of your subjects. So if you're writing about your mother who is horrible, you still want to put the good and the medium and then the ugly around her because you're also talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly with yourself. And Jeanette did a nice job of that. Well, and so, she was also a very sympathetic character. Well, she was. Now, my question is, you said that memoirs are a slice of life. Yes. Now, it, my, in my recollection, she, it, her book was not a slice of it her was. life. It was? Yeah, it was from age three until about age 17. And that's considered a slice? Yes. And then she rushed really into her adulthood. I mean, that was like an epilogue. Yeah, right. She didn't that, was falling much a, that was falling action. It was the beginning of who she was in the beginning, yeah. and then maybe a little bit at the end, but that well, was really That was good, because we wanted to know where she came from. And, right, 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 yeah. right. So we hit the climax, and then it went down. Okay. And we, that was, how okay. did these characters end up? Okay, so a slice of life can be a, an event mm -hmm. or a period of time. Yes. For the most part. Right. And when you're writing about yourself as a, a hero, I, can you do you also include other people as heroes in your book as well? Yeah, that would be your mentors. That would be your mentors. And it's interesting that a mentor doesn't have to be a person. It can be someone who's dead. It can be someone. So your grandma who passed on can be your mentor. It could be God. It could be a book. It could be a piece of music. It could be a piece of art. It can be anything. That could be your mentor. So are you seeing trends? Um, 
people coming to you now? Uh, uh, do you see any trends mm. of books or ideas or slices? I see a lot of spiritual books uh -huh. about finding your spiritual gifts. Mm. Seen a lot of that. But that's the energy I put out. I, I get a lot of great people who are on the spiritual so path. So you look for some of that? I don't look for it. It, it, comes. it just comes. It comes. It just comes. Okay. And the folks who are the victim people, I tell them that they're not quite ready and that they need to get on the hero train. On the hero train. Get on the hero train. Because so that's what people want, and that's what you should be writing about, because it's, it's very uplifting, and it helps. It's like, the, it's like the scattering, where one person will read the book about the hero, and you'll want to be, the reader will want to become a hero to, for someone else. Mm -hmm. It's actually the feminine hero journey, which in the female journey, the only way that she completes her journey is by mentoring somebody else, like Rose did in Titanic. That she, right. old Rose, mentored right. the young people. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got a caller. Hello. Hello. Yes, hi. Hi. My, hi. Who, who's calling? I'm Margaret. Hey, Margaret. Margaret, I'm going to ask you to um, move away from your computer while you oh, talk yes. to us because yes, we can. Yes. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. I moved, I moved away. Is that okay? Or yes. Should I call on the no, no, it's perfect. Okay, I was watching you on the computer. Good, yes, but now you're just going to listen to us for a little bit. Okay. So, do you have um do you know Alice or did you just yes. yeah, okay. Good. Yes. I have you written a memoir or are you writing a memoir? Um yes, I've written a double memoir and the second one Alice edited. Great. Yes. So you wrote a double one. So you wrote the first one and then the second one is the next slice of life. Yes. I mean, if you have a long life, you know, you have several slices. She has several slices. <laughs> several. That's what I found out anyway. Good. So what, um, is there something in particular you would like to uh, ask Alice, or did you want to make uh, some kind of comment? Um, I wanted to say how much I'm enjoying it. I mean, Alice, I I've never heard her talk like this before. And she has so much to say. I mean, it's really fascinating to listen to. Um, I always thought I might, so your comments are going so well, I didn't think you needed a question, but I was interested in, in asking about the selectivity process and the process of making a structure. Oh, I love that question. Thank you, Margaret. Yeah, Thanks and I don't calling. even understand the question, so I'm sure. glad... Well, the question is, is when you look at your whole life and you have to be selective about what you leave in and what you leave out and without being deceptive to your reader. And how I would look at the structure as you're finishing up your memoir is plotting all of your incidents that move the story forward and that make sense and then taking away any story that does not move the story Forward. So, for instance, if you had a shoplifting arrest, but that doesn't help the rest of the story, but perhaps it would be relevant if you lied to everybody and that was part of how you overcame your, your flaw of lying, mm -hmm. that would be relevant. But if it's an isolated incident, you wouldn't put it in. And selectivity is you're the director of your own life, and it's a persona that you're putting on the page. It's not your real, 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 real life. So you want to make it, it's manufactured, but it's still true. So you're working that fence of, I don't want to put everything in, but I want to put enough in so that the reader knows I'm a true person. Mm -hmm. And that's being part of the selectivity process. Margaret, are you still there? Yes, I am. I'm, I'm quite, like I said, it's quite fascinating to listen to. Yeah, well, I'm, 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 you know, it's wonderful, and I feel honored to have Alice here, and especially with you calling in and saying that. That means that we're doing a good job. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, You're Margaret. You're doing a wonderful job. Margaret, really. tell, tell me something. Tell me uh, just a, this, a little bit of what you chose to talk about in your first memoir. Well, you see, mine was, in a way, my kind of theme is inspiration. But I started when I was in my 20s, and it was not so much inspiration as relationship. And one of the characters was Hunter Thompson, who would go under the category of famous. 
so that was why I wrote it, basically not for, about me, but to bring out the letters I had gotten from him when I was working on his um, first book, Hell's Angels. And I thought this was a marvelous piece of his biography that wasn't in his, in his um, carbon-copied letter file. I had the only copy, so I would structure it around that. But then I wanted to, I thought, that's not really what I want to say, actually. So getting back to me, I turned it into a relationship story because there were two other males at the very same time who were also kind of outlaw writers that were my heroes, heroes, let's say heroes for me and teaching me to be a hero by their um, having their voice. So the first, so, but at once I got going, I kept learning more and more. It was like I didn't, I, the story was different once I started trying to tell it. So it, became, it went into a second memoir. Wow. Yes. And so is your second, is your second one done? Yes, that's the one that Alice edited. It uh, was two, 2000, the en- very end of 2012, yes. Wow, what an interesting yeah, story. Great. Margaret, you're great, because I've read some of um, his work. Um, he's very controversial. Um, I just had a young guy today, he was telling, it's mostly young males who say this, but they all, a lot of young males take him as a model, basically because his voice surprises them all the time. It goes from one emotion to another to another, and it's something, it, it's soft, it's loud, it's um, surprising, it um, strikes deep. So I enjoy thoroughly working with him. Terrific. Well, you know, you've just inspired me even more, Margaret. Okay. So I want to thank you because, I mean, I'm listening to these and I'm, you know, I'm kind of, my, my wheels in my head are turning. You know, and yeah, I'm sitting well, here. Yeah, your program is inspiring, and this book is called "Keep This Quiet," and the second one, "Keep This Quiet Too," um, just in case anyone got interested. But like I said, I'm enjoying your program. It's very, very informative. Good. Well, thank you. We hope you come back week after week because we always have good shows. But today, well, of course, you. is extra special <laughs> with Alice here. <laughs> I think it's very special with Alice. Like I said, I hadn't heard Alice do this kind of program before and it's just like she's filled with information filled with it and it's, it comes out in an original manner so I'm enjoying it thank, thank you, you so much Margaret we really appreciate, appreciate it, it. terrific you're, you're welcome and thank your you. questions I'm enjoying good thank you so much I, uh, you made my night I think you might you might you might have made my week and it has just started <laughs> <laughs> thank you honey Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Okay, so we have another caller. Hello. Hi, this is Ann. Ann, hello. Hi. How are you? Is this Marilyn? Yes. How can I hear you over there, but I can hear you here? <laughs> uh, just walk away from your computer. I was halfway away. Now I'm fully away. Okay, good. So welcome, honey. How are you doing? I'm fine. Good. So, do you have a question for Alice or a comment or? Um, I, you know, I'm just, I'm thrilled. I think she's just doing a fabulous job uh, communicating the so many elements of the importance of how to write, why to write, what to consider. Um, you know, I've read different things about writing memoir, and I've got several books at home I'm reading, and um she just conceptualizes things beautifully. So are you uh, thinking of writing? I have all my life. I've, I've thought that there was, my story was important to tell all my life, uh, even as a child, which I, I would put it out of my mind because I thought that was so strange. But all through my life and as I shared little bits and pieces of my life story throughout my life, I've been told numerous, numerous times. You need to write that in a book. You need to write that in a book. You need to write that in a book. So I am going to write, but trying to break it down into I, what I really appreciate Alice saying was, um, you know, a memoir needed to be a slice of life and an autobiography, which is really sometimes what I think about writing. Right. But 
you know, do I really want to take on that big of a project? Should I take on that big of a project? You should. And, well, and then, and then, well, thank you. But then I hear um, this other lady, I'm sorry, I forget her name, calling and said she'd done, you know, a double uh, memoir back to back. And perhaps I should write, you know, four or five or six memoirs. I, I don't know. And, and I think that's where the confusion lies for me. But just hearing what she's saying, at least I can get started. You need to get started, and getting started means listing all of your turning points, all those points in your life where you had a death and a life and a rebirth. So the death would be the death of a home you're moving, the death of a person, death of an idea, death of a relationship, death of a career, and that's a turning point. And turning point sometimes doesn't have to be bad. I mean, you could have death of singlehood, meaning the birth of marriage, you see, so... Uh, turning points can be very positive. They can also be sometimes one of the hardest things that we've ever had to go through. But those are the conflicts and the heartbeats of what memoir, th that's the engine, those are the engines of memoir, the turning points. And you have well, to lay them you. out, and they become chapters, and you start writing scenes, and scenes are real-time on the page, which they can be five pages of something that happened within two seconds, and that's a scene and you start working on scenes with dialogue and character and setting and description and details and that's where the story comes forth because memoir is not all about telling I did this I did that I did this I did that it's creating scenes where the reader can put him or herself into it and, and that's, they can really feel what's going yeah, on yeah and feel and that's where the writing comes in that's where good writing comes in and avoiding cliches and using great details and descriptions and making the reader feel emotionally connected to you. And that starts with, the good, with good writing. And also anticipating reader question. So if you've been a goofball, you need to answer that question of why you've been a goofball through reflection. And reflection is what the memoir has that novels don't have sometimes because novels move away from reflection. The characters do, 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 and they don't think about what their actions mean to others. But in memoir, you have to think about what your actions did to other people. Well, I thought about that all my life, so that ought to be rather easy. <laughs> <laughs> so do you know where to start? Uh, you know, I, I know I don't. Uh, I really don't, but I know I must. You know, my mother just requested a week ago that I please write my book before she passes on, and, you know, She's elderly, and, you know, we never know. These moments in life are, are important, and I, I want to write it for myself, of course. But when my mother um, tells me, the only thing I think she's ever said to me in all of the time I've known her is that's what she wants me to do for her, mm -hmm. it has a, lot, has a lot of weight to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So do you have more of an idea now of how to start? Of which slice um, you want to start I, I, with? I was making notes the whole time Alice was speaking. So, yes, yes. I, I, I mean, I have, I have a much better idea. And e even if I were to start and write, um, like I think she was talking about chapters, uh, what did she call them, turning points. Um, I have many, many, many turning points. And if I did nothing more than just list them, I think that's what I'm hearing her say. And maybe even that, listing the turning points, would um, show me. Uh, what I really need to write about, at least to begin with. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I think that, again, based on the other, your other um, call, caller that was on that was speaking about having the two different memoirs that she had written, um, that kind of opens up the boundaries of I don't have to think about one and one only. It lists that, that, that the the fear of well, am I going to write the right one? <laughs> right. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. I'm. I'm really feeling um, encouraged right. because it doesn't matter. And it, and it doesn't. I don't think, from what I'm hearing, it doesn't have to even be in any kind of chronological order. No. It's more it's, about an experience, a, mm -hmm. a, 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 a bit, a piece of you. Yes. I mean, there has to be structure to it. But at this point, if you're just getting started, that you need to get the stories down and let the writing begin. And I invite you to sign up for my free newsletter on my website at aliceosborne.com and get connected. I write, I write great blogs that will help you, and I, I like to connect you with other people, too. So if, if I'm not the right person to teach you, I definitely want to make sure that you get to the right people. 
Well, thank you, Alice. And, and you know, I feel like it's a blessing that I've, um, Marilyn, I've drawn Marilyn to me, or she's drawn me to her, or a little bit of both, both. because I, I really value the quality um, um, shows that she does with the people she brings on. And, you know, it's, it's just so exciting to to make that kind of a connection. Um, and yes, I will absolutely visit uh, your website. I had plans on it already. I'm trying to get a new, newsletter. Good. And Good. Um, we'll absolutely sign up. Thank you. Good. Right. Well, thank we'll, you, Anne. Uh, thank you for, for calling. I'm really delighted. Okay. Thanks All right. for having me on. All right. Thanks. Bye, Bye, honey. Bye-bye. So I want uh, Alice 